Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be looking at Edelweiss which is uh, one of the new sort of anime tanks from uh, an old Sega game called Valkyria, uh, Valkyria Chronicles when I can get my words out. And uh, for those of you that don't know what Valkyria Chronicles is, uh, here's a, a short clip to actually show it you. So basically what it is, it's a, it's like a mixture of turn-based uh, and real-time strategy with sort of RPG elements as well. Um, it came out quite a while ago on the PlayStation 3 and, and became a bit of a cult classic really. Uh, it, it's one of those games that I, I played years ago uh, when it first came out, but not very often. It was, um, I don't know, at the time I wasn't really into this sort of thing. I do like these games, but you know sometimes you go through phases. And uh, I ended up getting rid of it from about uh, when I was about halfway through it, and I've regretted it to be honest. And I think personally, I'm going to pick up the remastered version on PlayStation 4. You can get it for about 15 pounds, I think. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Um, there you go, Valkyria Chronicles, and I think you'll see Edelweiss uh, in a moment. Right, now we've had a look at that clip, um, let's have a look at uh, Edelweiss. Well, there's, uh, there's two actually, there's Edelweiss and The Nameless, uh, but in this episode we're going to be looking at Edelweiss, and uh, hopefully I will be uploading a Nameless one shortly after this one. But anyway, uh, it sits in the Japanese tech tree. At the moment, it is in the store only in a bundle um, with The Nameless, which is 19,800 gold. And uh, as usual, it's bundled up. You get a couple of garage slots in there. You get 30 days of premium, 20 times three boost stops, and you also get two exclusive crews, which I do not have uh, because these are um, loan tanks. I'm fortunate enough to get them on loan, so I don't get the crews with them um, because of uh, basically the difficulty of, of crediting and then um, retrieving the crews, so they can't do that. Which is the uh, same with the. Um, Oh, what's it called? The one with the dog. I can't think now. But anyway, um, my mind's just gone blank. Rudy, that was it, yeah. So anyway, Edelweiss Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank. Now, um, whether you love it or hate it or just don't give a shit, like I said in yesterday's video, they are here. I'm in two minds. Um, I kind of like the look of them. Uh, this is before, you know, I've, I've had one game in each, so I'm not going to give any gameplay tips in the video. I'm just going to sort of talk about them a little bit. But anyway, I have... Uh, had one game in each. I, I do like the look of them. Um, personally, they do, so far, like I say, you know, very first opinion, they seem to handle uh, and perform quite well uh, as well. But, you know, they're not going to be for everybody. And Edelweiss isn't too bad. Its Tankopedia price is about 7,700 gold, which is actually one of the cheapest tier 8 premium medium tanks you can get. Um, so that's not too savage, you know, com obviously compared to the other tanks. Uh, the Nameless is 11,700, which is actually on one of the upper side. I think that's even a bit more than the Lerva, which is quite expensive. Uh, it does see up to tier 10 as well, and you get a 50% silver bonus and a 10% XP bonus. Now, in terms of performance, uh, it reminds me very, very much of a Panther II. Um, you get an 800 horsepower engine, you get an 88mm gun, albeit a short one, um, although again it doesn't quite, even though it's short it doesn't quite fit in because obviously it's just what the tank looks like. Um, oh I never finished saying about them anyway, yeah, too much. I like what they look like, they perform quite well, um, but I don't know if they fit in the game if you see what I mean. It, it doesn't bother me that they're there, I just don't know if they fit. Um, you know, obviously, with them not being historical tanks, some people are not going to like it, and that's, you know, that's it. They're not going to like it, and that's fair enough. Uh, other people just don't care, and other people um, really like them. In fact, somebody described them as Marmite, I think it was. Uh, yeah, they love it or hate it. But anyway, 88 mil gun. Uh, eight rounds a minute, which is a slightly better rate to fire than the Panther II, and I am comparing it to that because, like I say, they, they perform very, very similarly. Uh, you've got 195 penetration though on this 88 mil, as opposed to 203 on the long 88 uh, that you get on like the Tiger One, the Panther Two, etc., etc. Um, so you do get slightly reduced pen by eight. Uh, still get the 240 damage though. You got 245 on your premium ammunition and 44 and 295 
uh, on your HE rounds. Now aiming time is 2.3 seconds, which isn't bad, uh, about average for the tier to be honest. And accuracy is 0.38, which isn't as good as long 88. That's generally, I think, what you usually get on, on sort of the short 88 accuracy, but it is not too bad. Hull Traverse uh, is quite a decent 42 degrees a second, uh, but your turret traverse is only 38. Now, it's not a big difference, but that can make a difference if you're traversing your hull fully. Your turret, you know, obviously has to move and then flick back again. Uh, it, it's kind of a bit of a pet peeve in mind when you when you have a, a turret, uh, sorry, a hull traverse that is much faster than your turret traverse because it, it does make it a bit tricky. Like, say, if you're trying to sort of turn or maneuver around the target, every time you turn your hull a lot, your turret sort of flicks about a bit. So, um, but I've, like I say, in the one game that I've had, I didn't notice that too much. But I'll, I'll let you know sort of through the footage whether that does become a bit of an issue or not. Uh, and you have a 390 meter view range, which again is about average for the tier, uh, with a 750 meter uh, radio range for those that are interested. Now, skills wise, in fact, no, let's look at the supplies while we're in here. Uh, your armor piercing shells are 350, uh, your APCR are 4400, which is premium, and then obviously your, your high explosive are 280. Again, I've just put the very standard consumables on it for the test, I've not really looked into it too uh, too much so far. Uh, equipment wise, I've actually gone for a vertical stabilizer, gun ram, and coated optics. Um, I think this tank will do quite well in a support role. Uh, you know, I don't think you have to stay too far back, especially if you're top tier, you know, it, its armor is not too bad. Um, but obviously when you're not top tier, that supporting role and that extra view range is going to come in handy. And extra view range on a quick medium like this is always good because hopefully then you can outspot your enemies and stop putting the shots in before they even see you. I don't have a very good Japanese crew. Um, I really don't. So at the moment all I've got here is Sixth Sense and Camouflage and I'm training up Situational Awareness. And they're probably the three that I'd start with on this. And then maybe... Um, get brothers in arms on it as well as just repairs for the tracks it's terrain resistance is fantastic though as well um, but yeah it's pretty much a you know a standard medium tank although it looks pretty funky uh, and quite different um, and I don't mean funky as in sort of cool I mean a bit funky as in you know it does look odd um, but yeah it, it is still pretty much sort of standard um, you know standard medium tank it just looks different but yeah, definitely Sixth Sense Camo, Situational Awareness. Uh, let's just go in to see if there's anything I can think of or missed um, that you really want on it. But uh, Repairs and Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms is always one to go for. And then obviously it's just kind of dependent on which way you want to take it. I mean, you could theoretically put Clutch Braking um, and Off-Road Driving on it. It's already got a good hull traverse and it's already got good terrain resistances. So why not increase them and make them even better? But they're probably ones that I've put on later. Um, control impact might be one to go on it though um, simply because it's quite quick, uh, it's got fairly decent armour on the front and it, it seems to be a fairly hefty tank so I think you could possibly ram uh, definitely other mediums and smaller tanks and sort of bully them a little bit so that's something to definitely think about uh, let's have a look at what we covered. Uh, supply skills gone right, let's have a look at the, uh, the modules and the armour Right, well, like I said before, you've got a, an 800 horsepower engine, which actually translates to a pretty damn good power to weight ratio of 25.03 horsepower per ton. Um, I'm trying to think of a, a comparison for you. Uh, let me think. T44, fairly mobile, that has about 20 horsepower per ton. Um, in fact, let me try and find the Panther 2 quickly. I know I keep comparing it to that, but it, it is kind of similar. Um, and if you, you sort of drove one of these, you'd, you'd get what I was saying. Uh, Panther 2 gets 16.32 horsepower per ton. And uh, that does seem... I know it's not, um, <laughs> according to that, but, you know, it's fairly... It seems nippy enough when you're in there. Um, but, yeah, the T44 gets about 20. So, you know, its power-to-weight ratio is, is pretty damn good, and it's a, a nippy tank. Now, uh, 60 km an hour forward top speed, like I say, very nippy, uh, good power to weight ratio and 20 km an hour in reverse and a very low fire chance of only 10% and it's a fairly small engine at the back of the tank. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to big this up and everybody to rush out and buy them again. It doesn't make any difference to me. I'm just telling you how this compares to other tanks and it does have a decent top speed. It does have a decent power to weight ratio and it does have... 
you know, a small fire chance. That's it. I'm just, you know, trying to tell you how it is. My personal opinion on them is that, like I say, they do seem to perform well, and I, I kind of like them. Um, the way that they perform, uh, I don't know about the looks, but the performance is there anyway. You get a 7.5 second reload time. Um, this is all without, obviously, equipment. These aren't dynamic. Uh, you only get a 15 degree elevation, though, and uh, which can be an issue. Um, as you know, all the tanks have a small elevation. If anything gets above you, that can be a bit of an issue. So that is a slight downside to it. But you get a, a half decent gun depression of minus 8. Well, I say half decent. I'm being a bit unfair there. Minus 8, you know, pretty good. Um, that's not bad at all. Now, uh, terrain resistances are very good. 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.5. They are very good terrain resistances, and it tends to keep its speed over most terrain. It doesn't lose much at all. Uh, turret on top, bit weird. Uh, that big lumpy bit at the front, just at the base of the gun there, uh, is not part of the turret, which is a bit odd. Radio is just down in the middle of the hull at the front. Uh, ammunition blocks. You've got one turret, sorry, two in the bustle at the back of the uh, back of the turret there. You've got one. Uh, in the right hand side of the tank just under the front of the turret so behind the second plate of armor that's spaced armor plate so behind the second one and you do have one just down in the front of the uh, the hull there as well and the crew members you've got five two down in the front either side and then you've got the commander under his cupola and the gunner and loader oh concealment as well 0.22 stationary and 0.17 moving uh, i'm not quite sure why things are flickering at the moment that is a bit odd so I do apologise for that. Uh, still having the odd problem with my uh, capture card, but it's been going better, so I'm a bit surprised. Uh, anyway, armour figures. When I can find them, there we go. Uh, you've got 120 on the front of the turret and the hull. Uh, you have 60 on the side of the hull and 80 on the side of the turret. And... Uh, 60 on the rear of the hull and turret, but again, obviously they don't tell uh, you know the whole story. So, one to 20, uh, just a small rectangular patch on the back of the tank. Yeah, that's it. 21 to 30. Well, it's basically the whole top deck, top of the turret, the lump on the front, which kind of acts as spaced armor, which you'll see uh, afterwards. Top of the commander's hatch and uh, the hull floor and those blocks of square armour uh, on the side, the sort of track covers there they are, um, well they will act as spaced armour and they're, they're not just cosmetic. 31 to 50, uh, the tracks, they are quite thick so they do give you a fairly decent amount of protection. There are big gaps in the middle but uh, don't forget your tracks do act as a certain amount of spaced armour. You've also got just under the gun, you've got that small part uh, there, that little sort of arrow shaped bit, um, that does act uh, again as a small amount of spaced armour as well and then you've got other bits just on top of the turret there. 51 to 70 is, well you can see just under that lump or gun guard or whatever you want to call it, under that spaced armour there is another panel of armour and obviously you've got that small bit just under the gun on the hull. The sides of the tank fall into that, as does the uh, the rear of the turret and the rear of the tank, apart from that rectangle that we covered earlier. 71 to 90, that's your lower glacis. Um, you see, I was going to say it's fairly small, but I don't think it is. I think it just kind of looks it on the tank. It's not got a bad uh, reverse angle on it. It could be better, uh, it could be worse, but obviously, like with any tank, you want to try and hide your lower glacis as much as possible. The commander's hatch falls into that bracket, as do the, the sides of the turret, uh, which are 80, I think it, it said. And then you've got a small ring around the base of the gun. And then 91 to 120 is your upper glacis, uh, and again, small patches in and around the gun. When the gun is lifted up on this, it does leave a bit of a hole underneath, but there is armour there, 120 mil, and that bit of spaced armour just in front of it as well. And you've got that big flat strip. Uh, you've got a sort of a, a sloping upper glacis as you can see then and that thick strip across the top so if you are struggling to pen the front of one of these uh, try and go for that strip because it, even though it's still 120 it is flatter and that's if you can't get to the commander's cupola or the uh, the lower glacis but that commander's cupola is sort of half hidden by that huge sort of gun guard lump bit on top i really don't know what to call it but it is kind of half hidden by that so um, if you're in this, if you maybe turn your turret slightly away from them, but then again you might expose your turret cheeks, but you can kind of hide that commander's hatch by doing that. 
But anyway, there you go. Uh, I'm not going to try and give you any tips just yet, but let's get into the gameplay and see how it actually handles. Right, so here we are for the first of the replays. It's uh, a tier 8 match. It's on Muravanka Winter Standard Battle. And um, I've only actually played, I think, five games in this in total. Uh, one last night when it first got credited uh, to my account. It didn't go particularly well. Uh, it was on Erlenberg and uh, I headed to, started in the south, headed towards the castle. Uh, not really anybody else came up there with me and um, as I tried to fall back it, it just didn't happen basically. And uh, I think the team crumbled on that one. Um, now the matches that I've had, uh, I've just sort of picked it up and um, did alright in it to be honest because it, like I say it's it very much reminds me of the Panther 2, just faster, um, a lot faster, you know, well, top speed it, it, I think is higher, isn't it? And uh, the acceleration is definitely a lot better, I mean, 25 horsepower per tonne is, uh, is a really good power to weight ratio for a tier 8 medium, uh, it is very good. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite nippy, it's not a particularly heavy tank, it's about, I think it's around 30 three tons, something like that. Uh, the Nameless isn't very heavy either, actually. Um, at about 38 tons, roughly, which is, is usually sort of tier 8 medium tank weight, which explains, you know, why that's got quite a decent... Well, you know, it's not the best, but it's not a bad power-to-weight ratio for heavy tank. But we're not talking about that in this video. It's Edelweiss. So, I've come over to the forest. Not really got any help over here. There's a, there is a heavy tank heading down this way, but this LTTB... I don't know if it's fully upgraded. Um, I can't quite see if that's the the longer gun. I'm not too sure, but anyway, uh, he was well. He was circling me, and he was just bouncing. Um, you know, he, he couldn't sort of uh, get through it. I did miss him a couple of times. Went a bit derpy with that one, but yeah, it's uh, you know he he was bouncing. But with this, like I said, I just sort of went in it. You know, sometimes you get a new tank, you sort of have to figure it out a little bit or get used to it. And not so much with this one, um, because I, I know I've, I've said it and I keep comparing it to the Panther 2, but that, that's kind of what it reminds me of a lot, um, apart from, like I say, slightly lower penetration, but it is a lot quicker. Uh, but it's got the same frontal armour, or, you know, same thickness of frontal armour, uh, same 120mm uh, on the front of the turret as well, but yeah, it just seems like a faster one. And it, it is nippy, and it's the first thing that sort of strikes you about it when you get in it and first set off, is just how nippy it is with the acceleration. Now, taking down the uh, the TD, and I'm going to go after this Black Prince. He has pen and done the first bit of damage to me, but I'm going to go straight up and over here. I felt very safe to do that because, you know, it's got a fairly decent view range on this. I've got situational awareness uh, training up, and I've got the coated optics on here. So, you know, I was pretty confident that I would have seen anything that was back there to, to give that Black Prince a bit of cover, and there wasn't anything. So now, he's done, and there's an IS-3 moving down the middle of the field. The, the heavy tank is coming with me. The, well, the majority of the team sort of went over towards the other side of the map, um, have not done too bad. Well, I say not done too bad. They're not done too great, to be honest. And uh, just take down the T43 there. And it looks like the enemy team are making quite a good push over on the western side of the map. We've got a, a couple of TDs sat back near Cap, which are sort of guarding that. And uh, there's the medium tank behind me now. I'm basically going after this IS-3. Um, to give the, the TDs and, and RT a bit of a hand. So that's where I'm going after. There's a, a heavy tank over on the western side holding off those uh, other enemy tanks. And it looks like the heavy tank that was following me is now possibly going to head towards Cap and go for those RT. I'll try and find them, possibly. Uh, that's where he seems to be. In. I am missing, you know, I'm just get, trying to get across here as fast as possible. Just putting in some shots and, you know, if they hit, they hit. If they don't, they don't. But I want to get up close. And, you know, I could circle this guy quite easy. Uh, it is quite bouncy on the suspension, though, as you can see sometimes. But the uh, the minus 8 degrees of, of gun depression on this is quite workable. The the minus 5, well, um, again, that's on the Nameless. I'll discuss that in the Nameless video. 
But just look how quickly I've, you know, gone from sort of one end of the map back up to the other. And now I'm going to head back this way. Uh, there was a TD up here. What TDs are left? Oh, there's a... Yeah, there's a Borsig. I think there's a Shtere Meal. I think there's a Motherland left as well. There's the Borsig. He did get me a hit on the side. I don't know if that was HE. Possibly. I don't know. Now am I going to get another hit? I'm going to ram him. And I think if I'd have got a bit more speed up, that probably would have gone a bit better on the ramp. But hopefully I'm going to reload before he can do any damage to me. There we go. Now I did put a couple of uh, times 6 crew XP on, on this. Uh, and on the Nameless as well. Because like I mentioned in the garage, I don't have uh, a decent Japanese crew. There's not many tanks for it, and I, I don't really. Well, I've been slacking on my STA1. I think it's actually been in my garage for nearly a year now. Uh, so I need to get out of that. So I did stick some uh, crew XP boosts on these to try and get the crew up and uh, try and get thingy on this at uh, repairs, definitely. Um, but yeah, the, the control impact might be alright on this. I'd probably put it on the nameless rather than this. I know I said in the garage I'd put it on this. See if I can land on the motherland. Not quite, but <laughs> it was enough to uh, take him down. I didn't think he'd uh, survive that one. He only had a tiny little bit of health left. And in fact, I think it was actually three. And then the uh, the last TD got taken out. So that's it. That's the match. And that was the that was the second game that I played in, uh, in Edelweiss. Like I say, I played one last night. And that was the first game today that I played in it, and only the second game in total. And uh, yeah, quite happy with it to be honest. Uh, 2,954 damage done, 820 blocked, and uh, a first class mastery, and just under 100,000 credits earned. Now, personally, again, my personal opinion, I, I like Edelweiss. Um, I quite like the Nameless as well, but I prefer Edelweiss personally. And. Uh, yeah, again, uh, you know, I might be overselling it a bit, but it, is just, it just seems like a, a funny-looking Japanese Panther 2 with a rocket up its arse. But that, um, like I said, I don't know if the LTTB was fully upgraded. I don't think he was. Um, I think if he was, he would have definitely penned the back when he hit it. But, um, but yeah, he was bouncing. Anyway, second replay for you. Uh, again, another Tier 8 match. I not been in a tier 10 match in it yet um, I did do, do another match to try and get into a tier 10 but I didn't uh, manage to but yeah hopefully so I've got this for I think about a week or 10 days um, so I'm going to try and bring you more footage of it um, well o over the next week or so uh, probably in random destruction because I, I like I say personally I do enjoy this tank I enjoy the panther too um, you know I, I do like that and uh, I think that's why I like this. And, and anybody who's sort of been in the Panther 2 or or maybe even, I suppose, T44 maybe, anything like that, I don't know. They'd probably be used to this. I'd say the Panther 2 more than anything. Um, it would probably be able to pick this tank up and, and just play it. And they, they are, they seem to be doing very well. Um, you know, they've not been out long, but it seems to be a fairly high XP needed for a... Uh, for a, you know like an ace tanker so people seem to be doing quite well in them in fact I was in a match earlier um, the one that I did crapping in my Edelweiss and there was another Edelweiss in there and a Nameless on our team and uh, they did pretty well especially the uh, the Nameless I think it was in fact that might be one of the results screen towards the end as well but back to this match there's only myself and uh, I think is that an LTTB? I think it is uh, come up over this way, there's, well, a lot of the team are just sat camping around camp on that bloody ridge. So, the LTTB, he spotted the uh, the AMX M445, and I don't know if it was him, somebody spotted, uh, probably him, a boiler maker working his way up and around the back, and I thought that was him at first, but it's not, it's a KV-13. Yeah, he bounced off my turret. Uh, but unfortunately I just hit his tracks that one didn't though but I'm just going to keep moving because he's above me so that obviously does reduce any angles and uh, also it gives him a shot at the uh, the softer top but that big sort of gun cover weird gun mantle type thing where the gun goes into the actual turret um, 
that's quite tough. The, like I say, sort of spaced armour around the outside, and then there is a bit of armour underneath that as well. And it, it kind of covers half the commander's hatch when you're looking at the tank from the front. So, yeah. The, the turret can be quite bouncy on this as well, uh, especially when you're top tier. This, this is a... It is a bit of a beast when it's top tier. In fact, I'd almost say it may even be slightly overpowered when it's top tier, simply because of how quick it is. Um, I know you could say, you know, well, by that argument, you could say that the Panther 2 is overpowered, but it's not as fast as this. And uh, I don't even think it has quite the same... No, it doesn't have quite as uh, fast a rate of fire as this either. It's not far off. It's about 7.2, 7.5 rounds a minute, something like that. But, you know, this is slightly faster. I managed to take down the Boilermaker. CDC, I wasn't going to bother shooting the Arte. I was going to let the CDC have that one. And uh, that AMX M445 is back. Try and get around him. He go Well, I think he was going for the ramp, but I just missed. But that time he got my tracks and a proper donk. Well, that's about three I've don donked now from being uh, funny angles in the air. And I was getting a bit concerned at this point that I was about to be taken down. But thankfully, uh, I did have some help there. And between us, we managed to take down the AMX M4 uh, before he took me out. In fact, yeah, it was the, uh, the LTTB, wasn't it? So, let's head over this way and uh, see what we can see. Alright, the LTTB spotted a KV-3 down there. Now, let's see if I can get him. Nope, tracked him. Well, hit his tracks and spotted, so I'm pulling back. Now, that's one of the TDs down there. It's the Nashorn, and this other one up here is an E25. And it looks like he's either trying to skirt around behind me and, and the LTTB, who's now chasing him down, or... He was trying to get uh, around the back of our cap and go for Artie. Now, where is the sneaky little bugger? There he is. And missed, of course. Now, he's been taken down. So now I'm going to go back and I'll be able to outspot the KV-3. Uh, unless he's got binoculars on, possibly. But I don't think he will. Well, I don't see why he would do. Um, so, yeah, I should be able to outspot him as long as I can get close enough. But I'm not going to do it from that corner. I'm going to cut across, I think, and do it from the other side. The LTTB, he's heading down towards Cap. Um, and it looks like he's going after that heavy. Or he was going to do a bit of spotting. But I'm going to peek out here and see if I can see that KB3 again. And the, uh, and the NAS horn. Now, something I did, uh, I think I did forget to mention in the uh, in the garage, but is the the health uh, the hit points, uh, fourteen hundred, so one thousand four hundred hit points, and shell velocity uh, on your AP, it's only eight hundred and fifty meters a second, which, uh, if memory serves me, is quite is uh, is on the low side for for most tier eights, and its premium ammunition are a thousand and fifty uh, meters a second, which uh, I think is, yeah, that's not bad. That's about I think that's about average possibly for tier eights, but anyway. Uh, your 850, that does feel slightly slower um, for a tier 8. So do bear that in mind sometimes when you're leading the target. Uh, in fact, it, it did, and it has caught me out uh, once or twice in this when I am uh, when I was trying to hit a fast-moving target. I didn't quite lead it enough. But that KV-3 uh, keeps spotting, so I basically decided to come at him from a different angle, which is why I've uh, dropped off radar, dropped uh, down here. And coming around, but I've got to be careful. Where's that Centurion? Nope, he's fine. He, he's not going to spot me. There's the KV-3. And he's still looking up to where I was because I'd uh, been putting a couple of shots in. And didn't manage to pen him that time. But I've spotted him, so I, I got an assisted from some, assist, an assister, an assisted from somebody else that hit him. And I've knocked his tracks off. That one went through, though. I'll pull back a bit more. I'm not spotted. And tracked him again, which is fine because then if anybody hits him, I'm going to get some uh, XP for it. I just sneakily took that one. I, I could have let him burn, I suppose. Then again, he might have used a fire extinguisher. And now there's a Nashorn left, and 
I think. Did that say KV4? Well, that's something that, and again, um, you know, one of you guys, and I am terrible with names, so I do apologise, uh, reminded me of it. And it's something that I uh, I used to do, and then I sort of went through a phase of just forgetting about it. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're struggling to pen the front of something, track the damn thing. Track it, try and keep it in place, and then you can either move around it, or hopefully if you track it, other people can hit it. Or if it's RT in game, it's easier to hit a, a stationary target with RT than it is a moving one. But there you go, that's the match. Uh, rushed into cab. I think I did. I get hit on the NAS on. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention then. Um, no, typical. Uh, but anyway, came out of that match with uh, 2,413 damage done, uh, 1730 assisted and 2610 XP which got me uh, an ace tanker so I'm quite happy with that and just over 108,000 credits earned uh, but like I say it wasn't all sunshine and roses uh, I think I played about five games in it there is uh, two results screens or two sets of results coming up sorry uh, one of them I think um, was a tier yeah one of them was a tier 9 match not very heavily and uh, the other one was a pretty poor match where I think it was Erlenberg again, and there were possibly about four of us that went across to the castle, and uh, the the other ones that came with me kind of rushed in towards the castle from starting in the south, and ended up getting surrounded. So yeah, it wasn't all good, but I thought I'd give you a, a bit of a fair sort of range of scores, just to show you that it wasn't all just almighty. But anyway, there you go, Edelweiss. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's been able to allow you to make up your mind as to whether you want to pick one up or if not, at least, you know, where you want to be shooting it to try and take one down. But anyway, uh, hopefully the nameless video should upload just after this and uh, I'll be back on Sunday. So until then, take care of there and I'll catch you next time. See you later.